Aloha, and welcome back to Talk Story with John Wahei. The last show we had, we had as our guests two prominent political pundits, and we discussed what the governor might veto that was passed by the, 19, by the 2019 legislative session. Well, today we have Hana Ho, a continuation of that discussion, because we actually have a list of bills that the governor has notified the legislature that he is seriously considering vetoing. Now, what does that mean? Well, first off, it means that any bill not on this list will become law. Uh, whether it, be, whether it that occurs as a result of his signature or by just uh, his letting it happen. Now, what that means is that he will not veto it, and within 10 days it automatically becomes law. But anything on the list is subject to a veto. Does that mean that he will veto it? No, but he most likely will. So... For the Hana Ho session, we have with us again today, Chad Blair, the governmental <laughs> editor of Civil Beats. Something like that. Something like that. <laughs> and we have uh, Colin Moore, who is the uh, director of public policy center at the University of Hawaii. Now, you can't get two more knowledgeable or interested people in what the governor does than these two gentlemen. So... You make a follow him around or something, right. you know. <laughs> anyway, he had his press conference yesterday. So one of the most interesting things that occurred at press conference is a bill that's not on here. Tell us a little bit about it. I'm guessing you're referring to the decriminalization. The decriminalization bill. I marijuana. should have said that. Yeah, we, we you know we had a little insight of baseball. Colin and I both called it wrong. We thought that the governor would surely veto that. He had indicated as much, saying, "Look, marijuana is illegal mm -hmm. at the federal level. It's a Schedule One drug. That's right up there with heroin." Although I was surprised that cocaine is actually. Schedule two. I had to oh, go back and check that. my notes. Oh, that's because it's no, medicine. Yeah. You know? <laughs> right. I suppose it is for some people. <laughs> <laughs> the governor who uh, had never smoked marijuana growing up by his own admission, um, and I thought for sure that wasn't going to make it, but this is now going to become law. Possession of three grams mm -hmm. or less of Pacalolo will get you, I think it's like a $130 fine. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. You can so always not even trust a misdemeanor. The not even a misdemeanor. Yeah. And, and here's another thing, that if you have this on your record, it'll be clear. It'll well, be you can always trust the guys who never smoke. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> to be denied. Uh, <laughs> it's like, well, people who well. actually did it would have said, ooh, and, I don't yeah. know, guys. You know? <laughs> and, and I suspect that this is not one he was really no. pleased to see go through. But there was so much pressure to do but something also, about marijuana. But also, he's got young kids. He's got his children are in their 20s or, you know. And that generation just doesn't see what the commotion is about well, with regard to marijuana. As a matter of fact, the governor said it was a tough call and wish there had been some provision to maybe educate That's the right. youth. Yeah. Uh, that this is actually a, a drug, and right. some people consider that it does have serious problems. Yeah, I think he said specifically that minors who pay this fine, he would yeah. like to have seen them go to mandatory drug treatment but programs. But to be clear, but this is adults only, 21 yeah. years right, right, and above. Right, yeah. right. So, so, you know, what we have here is, um, I think, basically society moving on, mm. you know, and people just sort of getting past. The two largest groups supporting the legalization of marijuana are people over 50 <laughs> and people younger than 30. You know, it's all you guys in the middle, you know. You know how nice I am. <laughs> All right, let's go down this stuff. But but you know he did veto one one marijuana related bill. This this oh, cannabis yeah. well, he's bill indicated that he well, will indicated, veto. I'm sorry. Yeah. It's indicated uh, that would allow you to transport it between islands if you have a prescription. You know, that's so, a that's a very yeah. interesting. So you, I can tell you, I spoke to some folks just today in the medical cannabis community, and they're very upset yeah, about I'm this. Yeah, I'm sure they because are. You, while you do have state-sanctioned dispensaries on the four main islands, you don't have it on Lanai, and you don't have it on Molokai. Mm -hmm. So how are you going to, you're not going to take a boat to get your prescription right. and then go back. And I think they're going to be lobbying heavily. The governor, however, said, look, I, I don't want you to get in trouble with TSA when you're trying to take that 
medical cannabis on the plane. Well, you know, the TSA regulations uh, basically say, actually say, actually say that their job is not to check mm -hmm. uh, for cannabis, or for that matter, almost any controlled substance. Mm. Their job is to check or uh, anything that looks like it could be used in a violent way, you know, in, in some kind of terrorist threat. So they, they don't do look for right. it. Now, if they happen to come across it, they will report you to a law the enforcement DA, yeah. of, uh, official, but they're not going to check for it. Yeah. And, and so that, that exists. Now, the governor, actually, I asked him about this, you know, and I said, hey, Gov, you know, I thought we had a progressive image going here. And, <laughs> what, what, you know, what is this stuff? And he tells me, and I don't know, so this is something people can, he says that we already have uh, rules in place that allow them to uh, do this, to go between islands. I, I don't know what that means. I don't know what that and means. And, and, uh, well, at least like, maybe it's for testing. Just for oh, testing. for testing. Yeah. yeah, I think they did work that yeah, out. I, I, and so, and there was something else he was not too clear about, but uh, it wasn't clear to me. It was a surprise, actually. Yeah, I speaking of Pakalolo, there was a, a third bill oh, related yeah. to marijuana, although this is not the kind of marijuana that will get you high. This is the industrial hemp bill. Oh, marijuana light. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, you'd have to smoke a heck this of a lot. This is your CBD oil. <laughs> <laughs> this is something that Cynthia Phelan, uh, the state legislature, Legislator that has long pushed mm -hmm. for him uh, is very upset about. She yes, has Cynthia a, is, is she really is. the mother of the whole idea of a hemp industry in Hawaii. So as she pointed out two years ago, the federal government in the the farm bill was able to get hemp to not be a Schedule One drug because it really is an agricultural crop, and this has allowed states to move forward in trying to develop hemp as a as an industry which has a history going back thousands of years is a very important fiber but the governor did put that on his potential veto list expressing some concerns about enforcement of the law and Cynthia's like it's not going to get you high i mean what's the big deal here so that's three bills regarding what, marijuana. what, what, what uh, you know I'm, I'm not clear and we i didn't have the chance to talk to him about it or for that matter anybody from the governor's office but what was the rationale for Vetoing that bill. I, I'm not quite sure uh, it would place it within the Department of Agriculture. I believe it's already in there, but it essentially would make it a permanent program. And there were some other provisions. The word enforcement kept coming up over and over again, what I read in the veto message. But I'll admit it was a mystery to me. I didn't see anything concrete. You know, I wonder whether it was one of those bills that, uh, you know, had some technical, put in the wrong department. There was one some, bill he did, in fact. Right said, well, I can't pass this, I don't have the number in front of me, but it, uh, it Which was... Which one was it relating to what? Was this the... Uh, here this we go. Uh, not the eBay bill. Oh, here we are, going through our paperwork, yeah. showing how uh, unprepared we are. Well, well there's see... A, there's a lot of bills. There's, yeah, when there's when you see people bills. doing this, what you know is that it's fresh off That's the press. That's right. It, well, it, Let's go with what we do now. We okay. almost got this before Civil Beat. <laughs> yeah. We almost got this before Civil Beat. Yeah, you know, I, I can tell you, what, it was not a very significant bill. And remember, it can always come back next year. They can always tweak it. But the thing that got all the headlines, and we were right on mm -hmm. calling this one, you know, it's not even called the Airbnb bill. But that's what everybody calls it. It yeah. really has to do with short-term <laughs> vacation rentals. There's HomeAway. There's Expedia. I think that's the same thing. That's right. Actually. Expedia owns HomeAway. That's away. right. And, and yet um, everyone calls it the Airbnb bill. Why? Because Airbnb wanted that bill to pass. And it's not going to happen. That yeah. was the one bill he for sure. There might have been another one. He didn't even say, this is my intent. He says, I'm going to veto it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You yeah. Know? And he got cover because Kirk Caldwell, just today, the mayor of Honolulu, signed Bill 89 regulating at least well, on remember we discussed that. We did. Yeah. And there was yeah. this relationship between the counties and what the state was going yeah, to do. Yeah, the governor said this bill had no enforcement, and even though 46 million This was the revenue, second bill I actually talked to him about before. Yeah. You know, and I said, what are you going to do with that? And he said something along the lines like, you know, we're going to tax them anyway. The minute... Kurt, sure. Kurt collects his data. Then we know everybody who has it, and then we can go and tax them. And that was a big problem with the state bill, is that enforcement would have been very difficult. There wouldn't be this information provided. Right. So Which Airbnb has refused to it's provide. It's proprietary, yeah. but in fact, that's what shows you where these things right. are. <laughs> that's exactly right. So he says, we're going to get to them anyway, yeah. so we, this bill might be too clumsy. 
Hey, I don't, I mean, other than Airbnb, was there anyone, at, I mean, even Donovan Delacruz, who, who yeah, shepherded I, this through the legislature, sort of said, well, I thought, he wasn't surprised. Remember that, that thing passed by one yeah, vote. Yeah, and it was been partially because they thought they had to fill these revenue holes. They did, and then the tax they, yeah. revenue picture turned out to be rosier. I don't think anybody, we, we've been seeing it miles away. The Real Estate Investment Trust, yeah. this is a bill, oh, Governor. No. This is a good bill. This is a good one, yeah. too. We were wrong, and you we were, were right wrong. again. Uh, the governor decided to veto it. <laughs> I went with my gut. <laughs> it turned out to be correct. He said the REITs bill basically would discourage uh, investment in the state of Hawaii. Yeah, which is the, that, that would be the Kool-Aid that you all drink if you're supporting <laughs> sure. the, uh, you know, the REIT and, and the investment Well, what's industry. the reason he did it, you think? Well, I think he did it for that reason. And probably for the re and and what what probably happened was that uh, people that are in that business and they're just you know a small group of them probably went to them and said, "Look, God, you know you're going to be the o the only the second state in the union that That's does right. this. Mm -hmm. We got uh, we can go invest anywhere. I mean, A and B, for example, is literally." moving all of right. its assets to the mainland. It became a REIT just a couple of years ago. Right. Think, yeah. And, uh, you know, and, and people do that. Now, he was also, we sort of discussed this in past. The governor. Uh, the, yeah, the governor. So in addition to having those kinds of policy conversations, uh, I'm sure that called up the uh, pension fund. You know, are we invested in oh, REITs? Oh, sure. Will this affect mm. my ability to pay people like John Wahee, <laughs> retired governor? <laughs> are, is the state invested in REITs? Well, oh, the pension fund. The pension bet. fund. Pension fund, you okay. know. And that well, these, these, that's good things to do. Hmm. And, you know, so he says, I got to save Wahee. <laughs> Yeah, and you know, his future pension. <laughs> what, what are well, what is, <laughs> Chad, who yeah. works for the nonprofit then, sector? <laughs> no pension. No uh, pension. No, we but, do, but you know what's we happening? We have a 401k. <laughs> well, 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 meanwhile, while this is all going on, you know, they're running ads. Yeah. Sure. And they're persuading people, or at least they persuade enough people so there's no big uproar. They spend hundreds of thousands but, of dollars. But let me tell you, the other side of that, the other side of that is uh, like Michael Hall who wrote a letter to the uh, editor of the uh, Star Advertiser saying, you know, I think they ought to pay that tax because as a corporation exactly. right. in the same business, I got to pay the tax. Right. It's a corporate tax. And, and that, you know? I, I mean, I don't think that, I mean, he got a lot of cover from, I mean, from this campaign. I don't think there really was, I don't think the general public really understood what this bill was all about. No, it was no. too confusing. So I don't think he had a lot of, a lot of, Grassroots political pressure. When there to was let this a, go. when there was an effort for uh, to tax a real estate investment uh, last session, mm -hmm. and four governors, as you know, got on got on the TV ad. This was for schools this was, to, yeah. to pay for, for uh, to pay for the schools. Yeah, but it was such a bad vehicle that you know. We immediately, all of us jumped on board. Nobody else was on board on this one. You guys didn't actually talk to each other on the phone, did you? Like the ad show? <laughs> it was a great ad. It was a great ad. <laughs> George. I'll Neil. Never tell. I'll Neil. never tell. I'll never tell. Ben, you know, you'll never John. kiss and tell. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Neil. You know, hi, Ben. If we would actually talk to each other, we might actually get something oh, done. Right. You know, but I think anyway. I actually had like a rotary phone. Yeah. Too, right? <laughs> well, let's, uh, well, what else we got? Oh. Oh man, we got we we're gonna take a break okay. shortly, but uh, we gotta come back and talk about criminal forfeiture. Oh yeah, yeah, they, I I yeah, that that would be a good bill to talk about. All right, um, we're gonna take a short break, and we'll be right back. Aloha, this is Winston Welch. I am your host of Out and About, where every other week. Mondays at 3, we explore a variety of topics in our city, state, nation, and world, and uh, events, organizations, the people that fuel them. It's a really interesting show. We welcome you to tune in, and we welcome your suggestions for shows. Um, you got a lot of them out there, and we have an awesome uh, studio here where we can get your ideas out as well. So I look forward to you tuning in every other week where we've got some great guests and great topics. You're going to learn a lot. You're going to come away inspired like I do. So I'll see you every other week here at 3 o'clock on Monday afternoon. Aloha. Aloha.
I'm Marcia Joyner, inviting you to come visit with us on Cannabis Chronicles, a 10,000 year odyssey, where we explore and examine the plant that the muse has given us. And stay with us as we explore all of the facets of this planet on Wednesdays at noon. Please join us. Aloha. Welcome back. And here we are, Hanaho. We're looking at what the bills that the governor indicated that he intended to veto. Now, I use that word uh, intended uh, specifically because it means he doesn't have to. And if he doesn't, then they'll become law. But most likely he will. So we left off right at the point when we were going to discuss criminal forfeiture. And criminal forfeiture is where the government uses its power of <laughs> fascism <laughs> or ty tyrannical government or something. But what we do is we use as a law enforcement tool the ability to confiscate property that uh, is allegedly connected to criminal activity. This is civil asset forfeiture. That's right. another term for it. We're talking pretty much about police departments and prosecuting attorneys. And if I remember correctly, they can seize uh, this property, even if you haven't actually been convicted of a crime or even charged with a crime, and that could, could include a car or a house or cash, any, cash, real estate, right? And then often they get to keep it, maybe auction it off, and then they get the money. Yeah, they. Are, in fact, um, <laughs> I have a buddy who makes it a, uh, you know, like life's work. That's the business. To go, <laughs> well, not to not to, to go to the auction. Oh, sure, yeah. Uh, they go to the auctions, and one time he bought a motorcycle for a really like half price, beautiful thing, da, 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 da. and he was driving down the street, and some guy says, "Hey, that's my brother-in-law's bike." You drive. <laughs> Not anymore. I say, where's your brother-in-law? He's in the kill. You know, he's in jail. Uh, oh, he's like, man, I don't know if I should drive. Well, there's a case where somebody did right. actually commit a crime and had to serve, but in many cases, yeah, but still, that's uh, not the deal. You know, he might be one of these angry types. When yeah, he comes yeah and you know, you know, the governor said something I thought pretty curious in the press conference when he was asked about this, which was, well. You know, this is managed well by Hawaii. We don't have these mainland problems, and and that seems absurd to me because, in fact. <laughs> The, the state auditor found a lot of mismanagement of right. the state's civil asset forfeiture right. program, and money wasn't going to where it was supposed to, and they weren't keeping appropriate records. ACLU of Hawaii just freaked out when yeah. they no, about this, this you know, I, I thought this was a good, well, I don't know the technical part of the bill, but I think the policy behind this bill was a good policy, mm. which is that you shouldn't be able to take well, somebody's Well, here's what the property. actual bill says. It's government-sponsored theft. It is actually in yeah, the bill it, it, itself. And... That's a shame. Well, yeah, and you know, <laughs> it's interesting that uh, on the political level, though, you know, as, as a matter of politics, that both the right and the left mm. agree that this is. In other words, the Bernie sure. Sanders types and the Trumps <laughs> get together on this bill say it, and say, say it's wrong to it's have, wrong yeah, yeah, to have yeah. uh, civil. Uh, forfeiture laws. But right? there's a very powerful interest group that probably did get to the governor and, and always has defended this, which is the police, the prosecuting yeah, attorneys, yeah, the attorney uh, general. And part of it is because they really uh, have know, a... All the, I, maybe I shouldn't say this. But I was going to say all the guys on trial now for criminal activity, they, 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 that group? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> that Not was better. careful. We maybe, should be careful. Maybe it's about going to that. pay Keith kind of shares. Yeah, exactly. Bills. Exactly. <laughs> But there is this perverse incentive because it's no. not just that this money goes to the general fund. Yeah. It goes to pay for specific police programs, and they rely on this money, which is what they said, but that's not a good rationale. No, no, you shouldn't. I mean, actually, I come from the school that if the police need money, then the government should be providing. That's correct, right. I mean, they shouldn't be looking for money to enforce the law. I mean, it, as basic as... You know, the reason why they shouldn't be doing that is so that they just don't hand out traffic tickets to be handing it. Mm. Mm. Exactly. Know, I mean, you're not supposed to be uh, looking for crimes in order to make your, uh, keep your operations going. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's real third world stuff. So you say it's rare and you would know for someone to signal the intent to veto and then to maybe change their mind? Yeah, it, it generally is rare because, you know, what will probably happen uh, in cases like this is that oftentimes 
somebody will come back out and they'd be it'll be mostly on technical mm -hmm. technical vetoes and they'll say but governor you know there's a severability clause mm -hmm. in the bill uh -huh. which means that if this particular provision doesn't uh, isn't uh, you know, enforceable or isn't, uh, doesn't meet the standards of, uh, of law, then, you know, it just gets oh, sure. pushed aside and the rest of the bill can go through. There's a couple of minor bills that I was surprised that the governor said he's going to probably veto. Uh, suicide Prevention Month. Su Although he's going to declare it a, uh, a uh, September Suicide Prevention and Awareness Month by executive order. Um, Which is the normal way of doing it. So he yeah. didn't think a bill was necessary yeah. to, to and, go And it about. says here it was erroneously submitted to the governor. I, I don't understand the technical reason why that was a problem, hmm. but it wasn't that he was opposed to this bill. Um, so they'll still have that month in September. But by executive order, not by, not by statute. But the other one, and I think this was Donovan Dela Cruz's bill as well, the, the Surfing Commission. Mm -hmm. The yeah. Surfing Commission, I think the governor said... Well, we certainly honor that. It's a, a sport known really only to us, Yukahanamoku and so forth. But he says he doesn't want it in DAGs, the Department of Accounting. And yeah, Total that Service. was strange because yeah. normally, normally that kind of a bill, if it had, if the governor was passing it, would have been in DBED. Yeah, uh, that's where okay. it sounds like yeah, it should you know, be. Because it's a kind of like promote the sport Business, bill. economic mm -hmm. development, yeah, tourism. Yeah. Yeah. Right there. And so you wouldn't put it in DAGs. And I can see all the DAGs people going up to the governor's office right now saying, God, you know, we got enough to do, you know, because your last order to speed up the way we <laughs> process is invoices. That's right. And so forth. And all of a sudden, somebody says, you got to have a commission for surfing. Yeah, there, there was no money in the bill either. Now, can you so. imagine what the bureaucrats all oh, said to God. each other when they saw the bill? They must have been screaming. Ah, I can know, imagine. It was like crazy. Did you want to talk about the condo bill? That's yeah, something okay, you know I'll tell well, you about the condo. The so condo well. bill is really interesting because what this bill does, it's a, it has a number of... Um, how do we say? Yeah, a number of policy issues in it. Sounds and, like it was written by lawyers. Yeah, well, first of all, this is a lawyer's bill. <laughs> mm -hmm. This is the bill that only, first of all, lawyers would understand. And it makes work as a lawyer much easier mm -hmm. if it passed. And secondly, if you lost on this issue before, this would have undone it. Okay, so what does oh, this bill sure. do? This bill allows... Uh, uh, associations, condo associations, to evict, ah. to foreclose on one of their members who hasn't paid his dues. Mm -hmm. He might have paid his mortgage, he might owe it, but it allows them to uh, foreclose on, on a um, non-doing paying condominium owner or non-maintenance paying. Now, why, why is that an issue? Well, obviously an issue because some people don't pay their bills. And there's a heck of a lot of condos yeah. in the state now, of Now, what it does, though, it gives the condo association a lot of power. Mm -hmm. and, and the first thing about that is usually, usually the ability to evict or foreclose you, is usually given to to an entity that actually has an interest in the property itself, like the bank, mm -hmm. like the mm -hmm. and so forth. What the Hawaii Supreme Court re recently ruled was that you can't, the condo association can't do that, cannot foreclose unless they have a contractual relationship with the property owner saying that they have the ability to do uh -huh. that. He says, if you get contracted to do that, you can foreclose. But otherwise, you need to do what everybody else has to do when they want to collect a debt. Oh, just sue Just them. sue uh -huh. and exactly. take them to court. So this is about property. You don't go around evicting people. Well, the lawyers who lost that said, you know, you just made love really hard. So... They went in, got a special bill. Now, what was really onerous about the bill, because the, up till then, it's just policy, you know, mm -hmm. like who, whose side you're in, is that they then o o reached out and said, we are going to apply this legislation 
retroactively. Oh, oh, I see. Okay. They're well, going to reach back and they're going to apply it to cases that have already well, been tried. Up a whole yeah. Can yeah, of worms, yeah. Already been tried, already in the process, already in the suit, mm -hmm. and so forth. And what would have happened, and you know, I can see a, a lawyer waiting to, you know, to 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 like um waiting waiting to uh get his bonus because he just lost and won. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but that's uh, that's kind of the case. Hey, so, Governor, if I could just make a plug, you said this at the top of the show. When he signals the intent to veto, it also means that all those other bills are going to become law. Right. And I think the veto intent somewhat obscured some pretty important bills. I'll just name a yeah, couple. Yeah, let's go get the, Just quickly, all mail-in voting. Oh, sure. Statewide, meaning by... My absentee ballot. That will now become... I just came from the signing ceremony. It's a done deal. Yeah. There will be automatic recounts in close elections. Which we, which would allow us to go into and really uh, investigate things like, uh, and hopefully avoid things like the Tommy yeah. Water case. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, prison reform. Uh, there's prison a, reform is a, a commission to, to be really a, another bureaucracy is the word that you use. That is correct. But the idea is to have an independent oversight of our troubled jail and prison system. You know, uh, the that, bail that bill. Was the, the bail bill, uh, there were two bail bills. One of them he is going to mm -hmm. veto because it's superfluous. It's actually in the right. prison oversight. But the other one is unsecured bail, letting a judge determine, gee, maybe this guy doesn't really have the means to pay bail. He really shouldn't be sitting in O triple C mm -hmm. until his court date. And uh, that looks like it's going to become law. Anything else that's in, that was interesting in all of that? Because I tell you, there's a lot of interesting things passed that are not on this list, and um, and some in, some other stuff like uh, you know, for life of me, I, I, why do we need a bill to take away uh, vape? Stop vaping in the high school. Yeah, this uh, just do it. You know, like do it. Vaping is a whole situation there, but I think the governor had some concerns. This is where a principal or a teacher, or a teacher would actually be able to confiscate vaping materials. There were some concerns about that, and 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 yet so many people oppose vaping. But we but allow the on. cops to go in and grab <laughs> property, <laughs> right. but you won't allow a principal to take a vape. <laughs> you, know, I, I, you know, I, well, anyway. I mean, it's not like they're doing it in the classroom. I, I, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to <laughs> telegraph my political perspective by, you know, 100%. But, you know, <laughs> criminal forfeiture is really... <laughs> Anyway, thank you very much for um, sure, our pleasure for coming back and uh, having fun with me, and uh, hope to have you guys again anytime, Governor. Yeah. Thanks for having and us. And maybe we can all call this a good session. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we'll be back in two weeks with another talk story with John Whitehead.